Guys, are you ready? There's a lot of common cards in the foundation set. Ooh. And we're going to do this in no particular order. All right. First card. I'll zoom in a bit. I'll zoom in a bit. There we go. That looks great. <laughs> Damn, man. You were slipping and sliding all over the beat. Correct. That's the kind of shenanigans we get up to live. So... What do you guys think about Silverwing Vanguard? If we were to establish our tiers, our ratings from S, A, B, C, and D. D, I would also pair up with a uh, meme. I guess we should establish some guidelines. S is like... Okay, let's establish the guidelines here. S is going to be cards that are almost auto includes in that region. Or like, yeah, it's like, obviously they're common, so you won't build your deck around them, but they're going to be almost always included in that kind of archetype. A is optional, but powerful cards that are probably most suitable in certain decks. Uh, B is like um, somewhere in the middle of like it's like 50-50 probably a bit more niche as cards have poor in the name no <laughs> okay so D is like unplayable garbage or meme we can establish that D is like bad cards but what is C C would probably be cards that are suboptimal where like there may be better cards than that so you would never choose it but it's like okay but it probably doesn't find any good niche scenarios yeah c is probably like super niche like super niche like there may be some potential there but most likely not and like are cards that are probably going to get power creeped on I'll give you an example of a card that's C, actually, a perfect example. Vanguard Lookout. You might argue that this card is like super trash, but it's got a reasonable, it's got a reasonable stat line to make it like niche. So like it could be something in a particular deck. Like if elites were like popularized and this stat line was like relevant. It's probably a bad example, but you kind of know what I mean. There's a world where a 2 mana 1-4 is reasonable. But maybe Vanguard Lookout is just trash. <laughs> Let's kick on. Silverwing Vanguard is probably a better, actually, inclusion into the C tier over Vanguard Lookout. Vanguard Lookout's, like, pretty meme-worthy. But I don't think Silverwing Vanguard is a complete meme card. I definitely wouldn't call it trash. It's two units being summoned that both have challenger it's, it's okay it's pretty niche we have a lot of cards i probably shouldn't spend too much time on each one bright steel protector oh bright steel protector i believe bright steel protector is an s tier common card two mana three two that grants an ally barrier big tempo Big tempo, good stat line, powerful effect. I have to put Bright Steel Protector into S tier, right? Easy S. Easy S, right? Laurent Protege. So what's B tier? B tier is like optional choices, right? It's like you might consider it. Yeah, yeah. B. B. I agree. Lawrence Protégé is a B card because you might consider it in your Damasian decks. I like it in B. B makes sense. Chain Vest. Easy C. It's not a garbage card, but it's very niche. Sometimes an option. It's less, it's less of an option than other cards, though. So it's C. It has some niche scenarios where it's good. Um, all in Fiora decks can utilize it, so I guess it's pretty decent. But yeah. I would put it into a C. 
Radiant Strike. I think I need something in between C and D, but we'll keep it simple, okay? Radiant Strike is probably just a meme card. I think there's better options out there. I think there's better options out there. Good morning, Milky Way Hun. Just in time. I'm going to put Radiant Strike into the, the D tier, unfortunately. Vanguard Defender. Vanguard Defender only a few days ago started to see play in Elite Decks. Prior to that, it was very much a D tier card. Let's put it in C for now. It's a 2 mana 2 2 with tough. It's okay. Only in Elite Decks does it make any sense. So I, you could argue we could put it into the D tier maybe. But it's like I almost feel like I can't do it because of, as, as, of, as of right now, it's good if something randomly generates it. That's going to be a huge theme with a lot of these cards. A lot of these cards are great when they're randomly generated, but... I can't put Vanguard Defender on... I, I can. I have to put it into... I have to put it into D. Yep. D. Cock. It's going to be D tier. <sighs> only only as, as of a few days ago did this card start to see any play. The next card though. Relentless Pursuit. God damn is that an S tier card. You want to say C? I'll put it in C. Fine. It is a C card. But Relentless Pursuit guys. Can we all agree that this card is not an S tier card? It's a card that literally grants you another attack. How incredibly powerful is that? At 3 mana. What a stupid card. What an absolutely broken and stupid card. Mage Seeker Investigator. C tier. I wouldn't say it's it's as much of an optional choice as Lawrence Protege, but it's definitely got some niche scenarios. And cards that generate cards have to have better value than any of the cards in the D tier. Like I doubt there's gonna be any cards in D tier that generates other cards because card generation is a very powerful effect. However, as of currently, Mage Seeker Investigator feels like a very niche choice that might slot into some Damasian control decks. You also have to like, she so requires a fair bit of support, right? You have to obviously be running six mana cards to make it useful. Mage Seeker Conservator, probably on the same level here. I can't say this is a D tier card, because it generates value. And value generation is very powerful in card games, especially digital. So Mage Seeker Conservator definitely goes to a C. It has slotted into decks in the past and probably will slot into decks into the future. Detain. I think I'm going to put Detain into the B tier. But argu argu argumentatively, it could go into the C tier. I think Detain's a pretty powerful effect. And I wonder if when I'm doing these spells... Yeah, I would have to say guys that Detain is a very powerful effect. I would love to put Mage Seeker Investigator into the B. But I can't. Even though Mage Seeker generates a Detain, you need cards behind it. Detain, Detain in itself is a very powerful card though. If and when you use it, it is a B to an A. Yeah guys, I think we can all agree that Detain is more than likely a great B tier card. It is definitely an option for some Damasian decks if they would want to be in control. So... Like, if you're ever building a Demacian control deck, you're most likely considering Detain at some point, in some metas. So, in the future, I can see this card definitely being utilized as well. But shall we kick on? Single combat, guys. Single combat. Where do you guys think single combat goes? And why does Demacia have such powerful... See, that was another thing I was curious about when I did this. To see how many regions have such powerful cards and it starts to make things very clear and i think by the time we complete this we are going to see a couple of regions specifically having such powerful cards look at this 
so far every S, S tier card I've put up there is from Demacia. How ridiculous is that? Single combat is crazy value, it is crazy board control and the ability to with one card take over the entire board with one favorable trade is utterly insane. Vanguard Cavalry D tier. There is much better five drops. It is pretty good when it's generated from Remembrance, but you would never main deck this because you would want to rather instead play like, you know, good five drops. And a tough is not a good five drop. Like you play Radiant Guardian over this 100%. But it is a common, it is a bit memey. Um, who knows if elite decks might consider using this in the future. Guys, I think we have our first A card coming up. Fleetwood Tracker. I'm going to put this into an A. It's an optional choice for Demacian decks. It's very powerful, but not one that is auto-include, right? It does almost auto-include into a lot of uh, Demacian uh, mid-range decks. However, you wouldn't auto-include it in every Demacian deck, right? So, I don't know. I guess that's not a good that's not a good way of looking at it because these cards aren't necessarily auto includes but they just feel so powerful. So I guess A is like somewhere between optional to auto include. Yeah, this is kind of auto include. I can't put it in S tier though. I don't feel like Fleetwood Tracker deserves the same level of praise. Okay, we'll do A. Let's do A. Silverwing Diver, guys. Can we all agree? Then move Relentless Pursuit to, to A. Let me clarify. Maybe if I'm not making it make much sense. S tier cards might not... Okay, let's change it up. S tier cards aren't going to be auto-includes, okay? But they're just going to be strictly and extremely powerful. I don't think Fleetwood Tracker is on the same level as these cards in general. I'm sorry if I made this confusing. Maybe I need to put more extra slots here. S tier defines the region. How about that? But I guess then we, we would we would consider putting Fleetwood Tracker into the S tier. I really don't want to, because then I feel like like I don't know if it like this card goes into the S tier. Alongside these cards, and it makes a lot of sense. It's actually the best one drop in the game. I'm just going to go with majority here. Majority of us believe that this is A tier. So I will stick with that. Doesn't mean it's not a good card though. Relentless Pursuit is so conditional and it wasn't too relevant for multiple metas. Hmm. That's kind of true though. Yes. Yo, CS Monkey. Monkey. Thanks for the follow, man. Hmm. Overall, overall, I would still say this looks fine. I'm gonna leave it at this for now. We can come back to this later. Vanguard Squire. Only up until a few days ago does this card make any sense. It's going to be a meme tier. I can't like put Vanguard Squire up here all of a sudden because of the deck that popped up a few days ago. In general. In general, Vanguard Squire was a meme. But now we have the elite decks. Cythria the Cloud Field. I think Sithria the Cloudfield will be a solid B card. It's oftentimes an option, sometimes not used. Maybe Squire is a C? Uh, think about, think about pre-elite decks. Maybe I'm thinking about this all wrong though. And maybe we'll just go look at the general value of a card. Sim similar to how I did these. So, in a sense, Vanguard Squire is a 4 mana 3-3 that's quite easy to reduce in price which can develop tempo, and tempo is not bad. 
I think she's much better than these cards. Yeah, sure. Sure. I'll put it in C. Hey, I'm Morty's brother. If you know him, picked up the game about a week ago. Just hit gold play and twisted Swain. My man, of course I know him. Of course I know him. That's excellent, dude. Welcome and good luck. Great job. Lux is, well, prismatic barrier. Barrier is pretty niche. Specifically the barrier from just the barrier, right? The three mana barrier card is kind of niche. I think it fits into C because it's quite powerful sometimes. Maybe C could be as a home that's not a meme. Yeah, yeah, definitely. C is like not a meme. C is not a meme, but also quite often not played, right? So like Prism, uh, well, Barrier, I keep calling it Prismatic Barrier. Prismatic Barrier, whatever, Barrier card. Three mana, three, three, burst speed. Burst speed, grant an ally barrier. Yeah, that's pretty good. A should be for cards like you, do you run Yorta Grifter or Zap or both, all viable. Yeah, I think that's somewhere A should be. A should, yeah, be somewhere that's options for good decks. Are you just ranking all cards? Just common cards from the uh, base set, foundation set. War Chefs is probably on the same level as Fleetwood Tracker in that it doesn't go into the S tier for how powerful its standalone card is, but it's definitely generally pretty strong. Lower A. <laughs> I would say Fleetwood Tracker is an overall better card than War Chefs. A it's not a B card. Like, I wouldn't put it on the same level as, like, these cards. In terms of playability. It's got to be an A. Succession. A spell that summons a 3 mana 3-3 three, three is probably just a C. You can sometimes play this on turn 2 if you miss your turn 1. It's tempo. Plucky Poro. Purify. Oh, where, where am I going to put Purify? Yeah, Faint said to put all the Poros into D. Purify. Purify is a B. No. Both of the A cards are better than Malenos Pursuit in terms of power level and playability. But one of them's a spell and two of them are units. I'm trying to like think about them without thinking about the fact that they're not like units and spells. I don't know. I have to put them differently in some... I don't know how to explain it. I just... Malenos Pursuit to me feels like an S tier card because Rally is quite a powerful effect in general. These cards are units that are quite powerful, but don't oftentimes win you a game on the spot. I don't know how to explain it. I don't, I still believe Relentless Pursuit is a very good card and I have to put it into S tier. Seems that Relentless Pursuit is going to be the controversial card in this tier list. This is just my opinions, guys. This is just my general opinions. Um, if I'm really unsure about something, I will resort to you guys for more expertise. But I confidently feel like Relentless Pursuit, in my opinion, is a very powerful card. Vanguard Redeemer. I feel like the C tier is going to be flooding up a lot of my cards here. Laurent Duelist. Kind of a meme. Play, give an ally a challenger this round. You would never play... Like... I don't know why you'd ever play this over Laurent Perger. Vanguard First Blade. Yeah, I guess it's kind of a meme. Big D. Big D, okay? Big D. 
I spawn legacy. So this is a spell that will grant an ally and it'll copy the allies of it everywhere. Plus two, plus two. Oh, dude. Yeah, meme. Like it used to be good. It used to be good before the rework. At least it at least had a bit more C value because it was a lot more niche. Now it's kind of not good. Babbling Bjerg actually is a good option. I think Babbling Bjerg comfortably fits into the B tier. We are doing all common cards from the foundation set. And Babbling Bjerg feels like a solid optional card. Lonely Poro. Uh, I'll put Lonely Poro into the C actually. I don't think Lonely Poro is that much of a meme. It's somewhere like in between C and D, I believe, because of the fact that it generates value in hand, which is like not bad. Ice Veil Archer, definitely a great B tier card. Catalyst. Catalyst of Eons, as of recently has been finding play. Ramping's a quite a powerful effect though, so... Even though we haven't seen it most of the metagame, generally the, the power level of ramping is not bad. So it's a 5 mana burst speed spell, the burst speed's kind of irrelevant, but you get healing. I'd argue A for Archer. Same. Okay. Milky Way Hun Redeemed Hydrate. Thanks, dude. Since most of you guys saw A in Ice Veil Archer, I will put Ice Veil Archer into A. Catalyst of Eons, though, I'm kind of. I'm a little bit stumped with. I want to put it in A tier. I don't know if I could put it in S tier. But it's actually a card that... You can build your decks around it, sort of. For a common card, Catalyst of Eons, you build your deck around it. It's kind of similar to Relentless Pursuit in that sense. Optional optional choice for decks, but it's like I don't know. I, I, I don't feel comfortable putting it into the A tier. I'm um, B tier. Sorry hmm. I, I don't want to put it into the B tier. I probably can't afford to put it into the S tier. I know some of you guys I can see As of recently, it feels like an S tier card. Yeah, but I don't think I could use recently too much. Like when it comes to building big decks like One Mother's Call, Catalyst of Eons is like auto include, right? Yeah, it's gonna be an A tier for sure. I put it on the same level as these cards in terms of uh, card choices. Yeti Yearling. Solid C. Probably even a bit higher than some of these cards. I'll rearrange them towards the end, but there will be like some of these cards will be in different orders. Poro Snacks. I mean, if you're building a Poro deck, Poro Snacks can provide those Poros some buffs. So if you're... Duh. I guess I have to put it on the same level as Lonely Poro. There's no way Poro Snacks is on the same level as Purify, is it? It's functional. It is functional. C if you're into role-playing. Yeah, C for role-playing. How about that? Troop of Elanox. After it got reworked. Um, actually a meme. I don't think it functions that well. God damn, I know where Omen Hawk's going. Top of S tier. 
Omen Hawk S? Question mark? Has to be there. Card's stupid. Alpha Wild Claw. Yo. That's a fat raid. Yeah, I was in Nick Makes Plays before, and then he raided Lady Mo, and then she's raiding me. That's color hype. Welcome. Hey, thanks for the raid. Hope you're having a good day. Guys, it's just in time. We are proceeding down the list of common cards. We will eventually be analyzing all these cards. Bull Elnock. For mana 4-5, it is functional in terms of a stat line. But would you ever consider using it? Pfft. Yeah, I'm gonna say no. I'd say it's better four drops though. It's a decent stat line. Hello. <laughs> Hello everyone, thanks for popping in today. Bull Illinok, unfortunately, to me, is going to be somewhat functional in terms of stat line. Ah, no, I don't like it there. I don't like it there. <laughs> put it down, put it down. Go into the D. Hello everyone, thank you again. Heading to bed, have a good stream. Thank you. Alpha Wild Claw. Big meme. Big meme. Definitely great D tier, D -tier option. Brittle Steel. Yes. Thunder me, dude. How am I going to pronounce this one? Tibia Malhor Q. Lol. Uh, thank you for the follow. Hey, Nocturne. Where have you been, man? You vanished in a thin air. Yes. Thunder me, dude. Robot Wizard 324. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, dude. Yes. No problems, my guy. Thunder Thank me, you. Dude. Consumer of charcoal. <laughs> uh, thank you for the follow. Brittle Steel. I'm putting it into the A tier. B tier. Brittle Steel is a B tier card. Definitely a solid option for some decks. Probably wouldn't put it as on a such a game changing level as some of these other cards. My computer and backup computer died. I'll be back soon. Okay, fair enough. Warding stones. I don't think warding stones, even though as of recently, it's all the trend. I think warding stones in general would be a solid optional card for decks wanting to ramp, but it might not be as auto include as catalyst. I want to put Warding Stone somewhere in the BTR. Unscarred Reaver. Yes. Thunder me, dude. <laughs> Plucky Poro D. I mean, it is good in a Poro deck. Or uh, there are other rules. I'm just... So, I'm gonna, okay. So, basically, D tier. D tier is cards that I find to be unplayable to meme. Unfortunately, they'll be sharing the same thing. So, if you're into, like, Plucky Poro meme decks... It's functional. Uh, C is like niche options that Dex will have used. So arguably, maybe Plucky Poro could be in here if you're making a Poro deck. But I don't think you main deck Plucky Poro in a Poro deck. I think when you're making a Poro deck, you'd probably consider Poro Snacks and Lindley Poro. But yeah, C, T C is like optional, somewhere between optional to, uh, optional to meme. Somewhere in between there. B is like solid options for certain decks. A is like powerful standalone cards, but aren't always auto include. And S tier is like strong effects or powerful cards that just oftentimes get pretty much used. Unscarred Reaver, for example, is a solid D. Do you know why it's a solid D? Because no one plays it unless they're memeing. Welcome everyone. Oh, I'm late to that question. I'm back. Hello, Park Garrison. How are you? Averrosian Marksman. Solid D. Good for role-playing. Not my kind of choice. Scarthane Stefan. Probably going to be somewhere in the solid D. I'm going to change the music. This League of Legends soundtrack is making me pog out a little bit. 
let's put on some goddamn lo-fi hip-hop generic royalty free music it's good for free old Ezreal decks do they actually auto include that though? I don't think they oftentimes use that in Ezreal free old decks do they? like I know I wouldn't let's put a high D there you go put up top of D Feral Mystic Enlighten cards that aren't karma as of right now feel like role play to me definitely role playing you're definitely role playing if you're running some of these enlightened cards i'll get a miso coffee right back bros uh can you get one for me thank you please avarosian trapper god damn after they reworked this card they made it incredibly powerful i'm gonna put it into the a tier i believe that this is a very powerful card standalone very powerful card um oftentimes it's better in a deck that's built around it I wouldn't put it into S tier because you need to support it with a certain deck build. I think it's definitely a very solid A. Stalking Wolf. I don't think it serves any purpose. I want to put it into D tier. Stalking Wolf to C tier. I don't know about that one. I think it's got I think it's got a big D on it. The wolf is D. R oh, and the uh trapper is C. Kindly Tavern Keeper. Now Kindly Tavern Keeper is a three mana three three that will heal an ally or your Nexus by three. Good stat line, powerful anti aggro card. <laughs> Kindly Tavern Keeper is going to be a solid B. Tall Tales. Stalking would be was better when you couldn't replace your own units. Yeah, no. There's actually a lot of situations where when they changed that interaction with the board, nerfed a lot of shit. Like the ability to like freeze your opponent's entire board is actually not an option anymore since they changed it. So for anybody who doesn't know, once upon a time, you weren't able to replace the units on your board. I'm sure many of you guys are quite veteran players by now. But yes, once upon a time, you could not replace units on your board by playing over them and obliterating it. And they thought that was going to cause issues. I don't know why they changed it, but I guess they thought it would make the game more smooth. But it actually lowered the skill ceiling, so good on them. Tall Tales does serve a purpose. It's not a complete meme. I put it on the same level as Poro Snacks for what it does. So yeah, I'm gonna put that there. Mighty Poro. Three mana, three through with Overwhelm. It's not a complete meme. It's not a complete meme. Yeah, uh, Cruel Zero. Thanks for the follow as well, by the way. I'm going to put it in C. Shatter. What does this card even do? Deal 4 to an enemy if it has 0 power, otherwise frostbite it. Yeah, that's hella me. I can't think of a reason why you'd ever play that. Uh, Will of Ionia. At the moment, Will of Ionia feels like a... Yeah, it's a, it's a B. It's a B. Is that too low? I don't think it's too low when I look at the cards next to it. Will is B. Now B. Guys, I'm torn. I'm pretty sure I can't put Will of Ernia in the A tier. Like, when you compare it to these cards, like when you're building a deck, look at these cards I have in the B tier, right? When you're building a certain deck and you're thinking about options for your deck, these all feel like optional cards, right? 
argue, argue, argumentatively, these cards up here are the same, but they're a bit more powerful in general. I think Will would go like definitely top of B tier, borderline to A. Health potion, solid C. It does serve a niche. Running one will is the standard before must run two to three. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you if you're running a deck, if you're playing a deck with will, I think it'd still run like two. If there was like a will deck, but there is no will decks. Nimble Poro. I would not include this in my Poro deck. So in that case, I put it into that. Zed's Shadow Shift. Why the hell would you ever play this card? Why the hell would you ever play uh, well, Shadow Shift in general? It's cool when you find it from Zed sometimes, but you would never main deck this card ever. You would just play another three mana three to him. Like, is there? Yeah, it's meme. It's a meme one. It's like not a bad card, but it's a it's a meme. It's gonna go in here somewhere. There you go. Shadow Shift is oftentimes played by AI. But AI are uh, Papagas. Retreat is straight better. Yeah, Retreat is like power creep. Unfortunately, Retreat's not in this collection of cards. These are the common cards from the foundation set we are doing today. And then tomorrow we'll do the rares and the following day we'll do epics. God damn, do you know how long this took me to make? Holy shit, man. Also, if anybody wants to utilize this themselves, you guys can go check out the profile. I'm putting up all my tier lists there. Templates that people can use for whatever reason they may have. Recall an ally. Recall. Hmm. Recall to me is a card that once upon a time probably had a lot more uses than it does now. I'm going to put Recall into C. Twin Disciplines. Yeah, Twin Disciplines somewhere in C. It's an... It's a high C. To low B. Shadow Fiend. Yeah, let's put that down here somewhere. Green Glade, Green Glade Elder. I'm also going to put that down there somewhere. Nevori Blade Scout. One minute, two, one, that gets elusive this round. I'm going to put it at the low end of B. Um, I believe that elusive is pretty powerful. One minute, two, one, it's not the worst stat line, and it could be an option within the near future. Rush. I don't think Rush is a complete meme. I'm going to put Rush into C. Why is Discipline a C? Hmm, that's a good question. I believe that it's an optional niche card. I don't know if I could put like Twin Discipline any higher than this though. It's very niche. Argued, you can argue that like Nevori Blade Scout, but 1 mana 2 1 with elusive. Seems pretty good to me. Twin disciplines. Like you'll play it maybe. Like obviously when these two are in the same deck, 
the Twin Disciplines, Navori Blade Scale, and an Elusive deck. Like, Twin Discipline looks good here and there, but is uh, definitely a lot more optional than Navori Blade Scout. It's very niche, I feel. It's definitely like a very good card in the C tier, but I wouldn't say it's as much of an option as the B tier cards. Green Glade Caretaker. Like if you're making a barrier deck, you want dis dis Discipline's top of C? There you go. Put that up there. What, what do we think about Green Glade Caretaker? Like it's actually, the ability for this card to like skyrocket out of control is pretty good. Seems like a very strong card. Like if you, if we look at the card in general, if we look at the card in general, like infinite scaling, barrier synergy, plus to attack. I think Green Glade Caretaker is a solid A. I hope I'm not wrong. Strong if you're a Shen deck, of course. You can get out of control, carry shield decks. It can be pretty good. Let's put you right there. Keeper of Masks. Should I put Green Glade Caretaker into S tier? Elusive exclusive. <laughs> Nah. Okay. I'm gonna leave it there then. Keeper of Masks. I mean, it's a two mana, two, three. That's a pretty good stat line to start off with, right? When I'm summoned, give other allies plus one. Yeah, yeah. Bird is ST or over Caretaker. All right. We were arguing over Fleetwood Tracker before. Now that I'm starting to look at this collection of cards, sure. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Fleetwood Tracker up into the S tier now. And Green Glade Tear Caretaker could take top of A tier. Keeper of Masks is a C tier card. I don't think it's I don't think it's a complete meme. It can do some pretty powerful things sometimes, but it's very niche. And it's in Ionia, so I don't know. It's definitely a C tier card. I wouldn't say it's a B tier. So I'm going to put it there for now. Ghost is actually a pretty good card. It's probably on the same level as Twin Disciplines though. I'm going to put you around here somewhere. Optional choice. Isn't as much of a consideration for some decks, but can do quite powerful things. Similar to a lot of his other cards here. Yeah, I think you're going to see. Inspiring Mentor. Inspiring Mentor is probably a bit of a meme card now. One minute, one, two is a decent stat line. Don't think it generates enough value. Dude, Inspiring Mentor used to be good. I don't disagree. It's going to D for now. Scaled Snapper. Three mana, two fives. Once upon a time, Mentor. Do I just put like three mana, two fives into D tier? They're quite a high stat line. During the base set, these cards were quite powerful. Scaled Snapper saw quite a fair bit of play once upon a time, but that was once upon a time. On turn three, I don't think you want to be playing two fives. Although, can you imagine somebody playing a three mana two five in this current meta? Eh, eh. Spirit's Refuge. Serves a similar purpose to Barrier. 
I think it's a bit higher value than this barrier card though. Can I put can I put Spirit's Refuge into a B? I think I want to put Spirit Spirit's Refuge into a B. That's where I like it sitting. I like I like it in B. I think it looks really good there. It's generally has found quite a bit of success throughout history of Runeterra. King Cow Lifeblade. Four minute two two elusive life steal. Yeah, this is solid C at the moment. Niche choice. Although it could be like on the same level as Blade Scout. Refuge over Disciplines. I think this is generally a bit more powerful. Like Twin Disciplines looks really good when you're playing like an elusive deck and you can sometimes push lethal. But the ability for Spirit's Refuge to sometimes swing a game completely. I think it's just a bit better than Twin Disciplines. Sorry, I just dropped in. Are you going to put this up on YouTube? Yes. Also, is this just a foundation set? Yes. So we're just doing common cards foundation set today. Thanks for popping in, by the way. I don't know. I like Spirit's Refuge. I think I would include it in some decks. And probably in... Like, as we go into the future, I don't know. I think... Spirit's Refuge is a uh, higher ceiling. We'll come back to Twin Disciplines and Spirit's Refuge soon. Maybe, maybe Twin Disciplines won't end up in C tier. We'll see. Sparring Student. It's probably not a complete meme. I don't think I would put it on the same level as like these cards. I think it can like, it can function. Yeah. Mm. At the moment, at the moment it's pretty memey, right? But in general, the power of the card, like it, it's it's got something there. I wouldn't say it's utterly meme. Nevoro Conspirator. Yes, yeah, C. Two mana, two to the elusive. Sounds like a C card to me. Herald of the Spring is really good at role playing. You think Nevori should be higher? Just like, think about... All right, there's two voices better than one. I mean, you flip your Omen Hawk, that's kind of cute. But this card can brick your hand. I guess Spirit's Refuge and all these other cards can brick your hand, sort of, but... I just don't think it's that much of an option at the moment. Sure, I guess. Think about an expedition. I wouldn't want this card in my exped expedition deck. So I'd want to be curving out without losing my board. Hmm. Okay. Nivori Hiraman. 
I think that slots in on the same level as a uh, sparring student. Or not. I think it's a bit more of a meme. I'm going to put the highwayman here. I, I probably just don't play enough expeditions. Emerald Awakener. That's some good role playing. Shadow Assassin. I don't think Shadow Assassin's meme. Drawing cards is pretty powerful. Although it's very niche at the moment. Yeah, drawing cards can't be C. Ah, uh, can't be D. Crimson Aristocrat. Deal one to an ally, grant a plus two. Assassin on B. I was thinking that. Like, when I look at the rest of the cards here. Never sees play. At the moment, after it's nerf, yeah. Still, I would I wouldn't say it's like that unrealistic to put it into the C tier though. Yes. As an optional Autumn niche. Needed. Autumn leaves nineteen. Thank you for the follow. Oh delay. Crimson Aristocrat, to me, it seems like a role-playing card. Legion General. Legion General is actually pretty strong. We are rating the cards as they stand out now on the current patch. Not exactly, no. Just like a broad spectrum overall, like general uses of the card, how powerful they could be. And we're not really like looking at them. We're looking at them currently, but just like, but also thinking about like, maybe like in the future within certain uses, but yeah, pretty much. I guess you could say current. I don't think I'm going to put Legion General into a meme tier, but it's definitely going to be C tier. It's actually quite a powerful effect. Yeah, like if you're making a stun deck, it's a solid option. Willing Death. It's definitely not a meme card. It's probably not a B tier card, so it's going to be a C tier card. It has some niche value. Legion Rearguard is role playing. Legion Rearguard is definitely role playing. Um, it's definitely going to be like, the I feel like you could almost go into the C, but it's not that much of an option. Because, like, the thing about Legion Rearguard is, like, if the meta ever gets that greedy, if the meta ever gets that greedy, stonks for Legion Rearguard go up. Stonks on Rearguard goes up. Can you guys... Does anybody remember this card was a 1 minute 3 2? Holy shit. Used to be a solid pick and burn aggro. Oh, precious pet. A. Yeah, I agree. Solid option. Solid aggro tool. The card is fearsome. One mana, two one. Your opponent can't block it. One point one. <laughs> the good days. I started playing uh, just after Hecarim got nerfed. 
Yo, you are the man for this. Oi, Nick. Yeah. If you want to use any of these tier makers on your stream, go right ahead, man. Yo, thanks for raiding Lady Mura, who then raided me. I'll be bringing out some more soon. So we're going to do, I'm going to finish off the foundation set. Then I'm going to start doing the uh, rising tide set and that'll be really cool. Glad I got to you. Thanks for that, man. Trafarian hopeful. I guess Trafarian hopeful is a meme. But again, I'll tell you what though, if the meta ever gets that greedy, if we ever got that greedy, Legion Rearguard into Trafarian Hopeful would be kind of pog. You're amongst legends right now? No, you're amongst people. You're amongst humans that all share a similar interest in Legends of Runeterra. But yeah, Nick Makes Plays is pretty cool. Legion Drummer does serve some functions. I wouldn't say it's a complete meme, but I wouldn't say it's anywhere above C. And it's definitely on the lower end of C around these cards. By the way, Legion General has to go up a bit. There you go. <clears throat> Don't worry, there's only like another fucking 40 cards to go. Might is a functional card. It's a niche option. It's very functional. I'm going to put that into the... Actually, I think I might put Might into the B tier, guys. And if I do that, I probably have to put Twin Disciplines up. Yeah, this looks right. I'm going to put Might up. I'm going to put Twin... twin I'm going to buff Twin Disciplines up to a B tier, actually. Might is a worth a Zenith. No, Might is a burst speed plus three overwhelm. Snap. Just like snap. On the attack, play the Might. Your opponent cannot react to it. And you eat their ass. Zenith Blade is a slow speed value engine that can provide you tempo as the game progresses. Might is a stronger finisher. Yes, yeah, so Might goes up to B tier. It is somewhat... A consideration and twin disciplines goes up. Legion Marauder. Legion Marauder is really good for role playing. Brothers Bond. Hardcore C card. I would always consider this if I was making an aggressive deck that had Noxus. I would sometimes use it and then cut it. Reckless Trefarian definitely goes into B. I put it on the same level as Might. Obviously, we see Trefarian uh, used in aggressive variants of Asha Juwani. However, like, that's not always the deck, and the, I think the Hearthguard version is better. But I think a 3 mana 5 4 is pretty good. I think a 3 mana 5 4 is pretty good, even though it can't block. You're not playing it because you care about blocking. Affectionate Poro! Guys! Affectionate Poro! C plus? C? Am I over evaluating Reckless Trefarian? I might be. I'm gonna put it at the lower end of B for now. But guys, more importantly, Affectionate Poro. Big fat S. I might be delayed here. Affection of Poro to S? Nah, it's fucking trolling, dude. Big D. You think the Poro might be a C? Have you seen anybody play this card? S, S, dude. We got some Poro. We've got some Poro role players in this chat. Bro, Affection of Poro is garbage. I'm gonna play this on turn one. My opponent's gonna play nothing. More importantly, guys, Legion Grenadier <laughs> is going to be a solid 
I almost want to put I almost want to put this into eight. Swim played it as a one of in SI aggro, SI Noxus aggro list, but he was role playing. There's no way he thought that was a decent idea. And why would you run one copy of it? I'm glad we all agree. Legion Grenadier. He wanted 10 one drops. <laughs> I, th I think it's bad too, Autumn Leaves. I'm glad we can agree on that. Yeah, Legion Grenadier seems like a solid A option. Like, if you're playing an aggressive, like, dude. And then look, Legion Saboteur, another A tier card. Oh. Yeah, it's always like you're making an aggro deck. It's Saboteur. Always. You're making a Demacian mid range deck. It's not always Laurent Protege. You're making an aggro deck. It's always Saboteur. Yeah, it's an it's not an S tier card, but it, most of the time, yeah, it's really powerful. Actually, I think I prefer it a little bit higher up. I don't really know how this list looks, but and then we had like the harrowing meta, whatever. These are all seem like reasonable cards in this slot. What is this card? Trefarian Shield Breaker. Five mana, six five with fearsome. At that point, you're just role playing, right? If you play this, Blaze Edge. Blaze Edge. It's like a ghetto mystic shot. It's somewhat functional. I wouldn't say it's a D. I think I could see this card having some uses. If not now, within the near future. Like this, there's been a few times where I've skimmed over this when I've been building Noxus decks, mostly because of Noxian Guillotine. It's like one of those like one of, one to two ofs in a deck. It does function. I definitely put it alongside, you know, the, the the likes of Recall and Rush, Tall Tales, all these kind of like, like when you're not just memeing, but you're building a specific deck. Like, I don't know, I like it around here somewhere. I don't think it's complete fucking poo poo. Arachnoid Sentry. You can use it in Ezreal Nox. Yeah. Arachnoid Sentry, probably a B tier card, right guys? Yeah, B. High B, very good. Cause like you need, with Sentry, you want to be playing it with other cards that can obviously like Ravenous Flock or other stun synergy. It's like definitely a strong, like it's definitely like if you were to play Sentry in a deck to stall out of games without Flock, it's okay. I wouldn't say it's a C tier. I'd say it's like quite valuable in effect. Yeah, no, guys, I don't think I can put Sentry on the same level as his other cards. Sentry goes up to A. Sentry sets up your Suo. I'm guessing Flock was an appropriate word. Yeah, Sentry to A tier, guys. Sentry into A tier. That's where it all sits. That's where it'll stay for now. Transfusion! I like transfusion in this t this list here. I think transfusion serves purposes. Yeah, I like it there. 
Crimson Curator. Three mana, three, three. That was an A. Now sees less play, yeah. Crimson Curator is actually pretty good. So the, the main point of this uh, tier list as well is so I can see how many powerful cards regions have. I'm already starting to see a trend here with Noxus, Demacia, and Freeld. Can you guys see the trend? Mostly fucking Noxus and Freeld, uh, actually. Holy shit. Yeah, Crimson Creator is a B, by the way, guys. Card can in generate insane value. I do, I, I do agree with the B for that one. Uh, you know what? Am I am I trolling? Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. It is really powerful, but when I look at the rest of the cards in the BTR, yeah, I don't think I put it on the same level. Can I put it in C, guys? Can I put it in C? Is that okay? Gilly. Gilly is mostly a meme. It is somewhat functional, but I don't think I like it as much as these other effects. I'm going to put Gilly top tier, top tier meme. Blood for blood. Yep. House spider. <laughs> I'm going to put house spider in B. Solid option. I think, I think house spider is a solid optional card. Or a lot of decks. I wouldn't say... I, I, I wouldn't put it any higher than that. Maybe that's too low. Actually, maybe that's too low. Nah, it doesn't look right. It has to go into A. Almost S. Dude, House Spider is actually crazy. Bottom of S T R A or B B solid B B House Spider is better than B I think I'm gonna put House Spider at the lower end of A. Okay, dude, I will agree. House Spider is one of the best commons in the game, and it's quite insane the amount of value it generates in one card. Make a new tier for Omen Hawk. Yeah, I know. I haven't got anything above this, but I think this is fine. Top of S tier Omen Hawk sits at for now. I'm going to put House Spire at top of A tier, actually. And I'll leave it at that. And I'll leave it at that. Shampoo. Very good for people who are interested in memeing. Solid meme. Rally is a very powerful effect, but this is too expensive. Wait, single combat was three mana? I was not involved in that meta. Holy shit, Rummage is an S tier card. Holy shit, guys. Draw two cards at one mana? Are you fucking kidding me? This might be the only card that can stand against Hawk. Holy shit. Between Omen Hawk and Rummage, these might be the best cards in the fucking game. Man. At burst speed too. How ridiculous is that? And you can like have some synergy with it. It's actually insane. Back alley barkeep. I've been to a few bars sometimes. Those bars were D tier. And they had this guy serving me drinks. And I wasn't happy. Dude, I don't even know what this card is. Parade 
Electro Rig. Shuffle four copies of the supported ally into your deck. Holy shit, that's a card that exists in the game? Bro. Why would you play that? Uh, Mushroom Cloud. You know, the puff, the puff caps are great, but you would never single, you would never, you would never ever main deck the puff cap card. That's for role playing. Three mana two three with elusive amateur 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 astronaut area not Jesus Christ stop memeing me go there dude how many D tier common cards are there holy shit flame chompers it's a C tier no How do I evaluate Flame Chompers? Because it's obviously very fucking powerful in discard. B for Flame? Okay. Thanks. That, that makes it a lot easier for me. Unlicensed Innovation. It's like a poor man's remembrance. <sighs> Actually, I don't think Unlicensed Innovation is a meme. However, I don't think it's a great card. But it can do some purposes. It can't, it can't, like, it is a spell. Gives it a bit more value. I mean, like, we've played Lux, Piltover, and Zorn decks, and you would definitely consider this. Well, actually, no. Probably not. Not now, at least. But in the past. C. 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 Flash of Brilliance. Flash of Brilliance at the moment feels like... I'm actually going to put Flash next to Unlicensed Innovation. I don't think it's a complete fucking meme. I don't think it's a meme. I think it's going to have some niches and that's what the C represents, niche, but not unplayable meme. B? Nah, I can't put it into a B. That would mean I'm considering it quite often. I would not consider this card very often. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Flash feels like a C? Yeah, I think it flashes a C. Used car salesman. Used car salesman is probably a C as well. Yeah, I definitely like car salesman in a C. It's like if I was making some sort of aggro deck, I would look at this sometimes, every now and then. Probably like a higher tier C card for sure. I don't know how much the delay is in chat, but I think we're all on the same level at the moment. Flash of Brilliance will be a C. Used Car Salesman will also be a C. High, high tier C. C plus. Okay. Green Glade L. Oh, we've already done that. Uh, Ac Academy Prodigy. Good for role playing, right? Good for role playing. Eager Apprentice. Eager Apprentice. Um, it's a quite a functional card. I wouldn't say that this is a complete garbage card, although we're never going to play it. But its existence is actually not that bad. Like we've seen how powerful like tempo is and cards that generate you spell mana like that can be quite useful. Lower C, lower C, there you go guys. Thanks for the hydrate by the way. All right. Daring Poro is a high tier Poro. I like Daring Poro in C. 
because it's not a complete meme and out of all the poros daring poro is the only poro who is not fucking around these poros are all fucking you know twiddling their thumbs daring poro is actually putting in their work yo what's up what's up boosty parko poro is s plus holy shit so many so many fluffies in the chat Daring Poro itself. Holy shit, McDonald's, what's up, man? <laughs> How are you? I'm sorry, but Daring Poro to me is a great C tier card. It is a card that you might consider. Shall we kick on? Puff Cap Peddler. Demacia is an S. -class. <laughs> Look how many Demacian cards there are on the fucking. Stupid. Puffcat Peddler. Great C tier option. Splendid C tier option. If is the player and you're his deck, if you fun Puffcaps, is still no B. Run Puffcap. Guys, where am I where am I going to put Puff Cap Peddler today? I wanna hear it. Because it is a three mana three three. It is a three mana three three. I have no decks at the moment. Peddler is B, B, B. Okay. Okay. Bottom of B. B. Thank you guys. I'm gonna put it into B. You know what? Maybe I do agree with you. I was nervous to put it into the B tier straight away, but I can see for you guys that we we you're all pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that, you know, when it comes to the sheer like it's like a better Crimson Creator. Yeah, I like it as a B. But do we like Crimson Creator as a B too then? They almost share kind of similar niches. Or do I keep Crimson Curator in a C? Because we were hovering Crimson Curator to B before. I was. Same with Twin Disciplines moving up next to Might. Are we still happy to keep Crimson Curator as a C tier card? Come back to it. Sump works map. Guys, Supworks map. What a card. What a card. You know where I think this card goes? Into the D tier. And then we kind of think about it for a second and go, all right, maybe it's a C tier. It's functional, 2 mana burst speed, grant elusive, very similar to ghost. It is permanent elusive too. So yeah, I think Subworks map is maybe underrated, hey. It does take up a deck slot though, that's the main issue with it, similar to ghost. But holy shit, permanent elusive for 2 mana. Is Subworks map just slept on? Jury is for B for the fact that it's burst. Holy shit. Do you think Jury, Jury Rig is a B tier card? Guys, do you know where I think Jury Rig goes? Into the A tier. I think Jury Rig is almost an S tier, but I won't put it into S tier. I won't compare it to these cards. Clockwork with Dream Hydrate. Dude, Jury Rig is an insane card. Stay hydrated. Thanks, Sammy. Dude, it's a minion. That's not a minion. Are we still talking about Sumpworks map? 
I think Julia makes a really good card. Oh, well, I'll wait till we get the Mystic Shot. Release the plebs. I have no decks to share today. No decks. You can check out my Mobilitix, so. though. Maybe we'll get a link to that. Like, I have no decks to share. Like, there's nothing really new going on with me. I have been playing a budget. Hold up. Yeah, you can have this one. This is my budget budget version of uh, elites. Yes, plunder me, dude. Yeah, we the peoples. Thanks for the follow. Why does that name sound familiar? Name sounds familiar. Anyway, back to the tier list. Sump Dredger. Yes. Plunder me, dude. Thanks for the follow, guys. Yeah, with the people, is that a name? Ah, that sounds yeah, 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 yeah. I know you're from Twitter. Got it. Four man, uh, uh, this card got buffed too, man. This is like a three mana four three that you can play without having to discard. It's pretty strong. It's pretty strong. Wait, are you rating all the cards? Unfortunately not today. Today we are doing the foundation set of common cards and Sump Dredger is definitely a B tier card. Zornite, Zornite Urchin is a fucking amazing card now. I put Zornite right next to Jury Rig and maybe a bit higher. Although it is quite optional, but that's just in general, that is really powerful. It's almost like, yeah, now this makes sense. It's like, I want to put it on S, but I don't compare it to Rummage. I like, it's, it seems like a lot more sorted around here because these cards aren't always included. I don't know. I, I like Zornite in A. She's a really solid card, but I don't think she's like upper echelon S tier. Insane. But goddamn, do I love Zona Ochine. That's a cool concept. Yes, if anybody else wants to use these, they can. Dude, I can't wait to do the epic cards. God damn, that's going to be pathetic. It's just going to be like 90% of them in D tier and then like one A tier card. Holy shit. The epic cards are so bad from the foundation set. Fuck me, man. How do they, how do they make such bad epic cards over and over and over? It's like they think they're coming up with these really cool concepts when they make these epic cards, but they end up just being garbage. Like how, the, like... There's nothing epic about them. Oh, dude, Rex is fucking... Rex is solid, man. Don't get me wrong. There is some good epic cards, but like majority of them are just like spitting in your face. Like, can you imagine crafting one of these epic cards? Holy shit. Caustic Cask. Very good card for role-playing. Let's put that into a D tier. Uh, Rising Spell Force. It's actually not a terrible card. Obviously, it doesn't really have any functions at the moment. But nor does Blade's Edge, Unlicensed Innovation, or Flash of Brilliance. It's probably harder to run Rising Spell Force than it is to run these cards. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's put that, let's put that like somewhere in the middle of D. Holy shit. Guess what card it is. Holy shit. Mystic Shot. If there was any card in the game that could match against Rummage and Omen Hawk, it might actually be Mystic Shot. Holy shit, Mystic Shot is just an insane card. Holy shit. Okay, we all know Mystic Shot's going into S. I want to rearrange this list really quickly. F 
fuck, man. Is Mystic Shot the best comment in the game? Probably not. That looks like it's home right there. Maybe even above. You know what? Yeah, right there. That looks good. That looks like a great spot to put Mystic Shot. I don't think Mystic Shot can compare to the sheer value my Omen Hawk brings. Fucking amazing card. Damn, you're going to need an FTR the way the D2 is looking. You know what? I think you might be right. And I can I can edit these for my next session. Perhaps we're going to need an FTR. I don't disagree. Yeah, I like that. And then DTR could be suitable for like meme cards as well. But for now, this, this looks okay. It's common cards though, right? Common cards are a bit, there's a lot of them. So I don't know if it justifies needing more. Like I put, these are all like reasonably like the same level. But at least like if I had an extra tier, I could argue cards like Legion Rearguard aren't complete poo-poo. And that way, yeah, for the next one, we'll have an extra slot. Clump of Wumps. Clump of Wumps. Ah. Is Clump of Wumps role-playing? Or is there actually some purpose in this card that would make me want to put it up into... Clump of B? I can't put that in B. Bottom of B? I was thinking about putting it in D. Can I put it in C? I'm going to put it in C. Holy shit, you guys are on the clump of wumps hype. <laughs> All right, Boom Crew Rookie is actually not a bad card. I'm going to put that in C. Does anybody remember when Boom Crew Rookie was a two mana one four? Holy shit, man. Middle of C, there you go. Top tier C, actually. I like Boom Crew Rookie. Astute Academic. Another C card. High tier C. Holy crap, top of B as a two mana one four. <laughs> um, Scrappish Assembly. What does this card even do? Summon two scrap. Oh, okay. Summons two stings, Drew Riggs. Um, at slow speed. Two separate bodies. This is a very good card, actually, for more role playing. Golden Crush Bot. <laughs> Guys, what are your thoughts on this card? Did, does anybody even know this card exists in the game? Crush Bot. It, it looks like something that I would stick in my ass. D. This might be the worst card in the game. No, it's not that bad, actually. It's not that bad. <laughs> oh, guys, vengeance. Vengeance. I want to... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm going to put Vengeance into the A tier. This is going to be because it is uh, not as... You can't just include it. It's not just like top echelon insane card. It's a great card, but it's unlike, you know, Omen Hawk, Mystic Shot. It's like, you've got to have... You've really got to like, I don't know, I can't... I, I cannot put it into S tier. It is a fucking amazing card. 
but I don't think it's S tier. I don't like a lot of the time late game removal isn't doing enough, if that makes sense. Although vengeance is the best of its kind. I hope that makes sense. Vengeance is the top tier of its kind of card, but overall, I think it's a great card. You could run decks without it. Sometimes you prefer that. I don't know. I think Vengeance is a great A tier option. I'm not going to call it a B. I wouldn't put it around B. Yeah, looking at these cards. Solid A. All right, solid A. Dark Water Scourge. Dark Water Scourge, dude, is actually somewhat unplayable, but it's not a meme. Three mana, five, five, heal five a lot of the time. It's like you're paying three mana to heal five and sometimes remove your opponent's stuff. In the past, it's found some uses. Plunder me, dude. Yo, DJ Riff. Thanks for, thanks for following, man. Yes. Lucy. Plunder me, dude. Mahovia. Thank you for the follow, man. Haunted Relic. It's probably in the C tier as well, right? Yes. Plunder me. Holy dude. shit. Um, DVI 15. Thank you so much for the follow. C and B in the right deck. I get the right deck, right? I think Relic's a good card. I versed a deck the other day. I think it was I was versing like Sejuani Trundle. And they just, they teched Haunted Relic for chump blockers. That was the most craziest thing I'd seen all day. Hey, looking at the rest of this selection here, um, I think Haunted Relic is a lot more functional than the rest of these cards. Actually, Haunted Relic will be a B. It's like low B, high C, but I don't compare it to any of these cards here. As of majority of the time now, Haunted Relic has been seeming to be quite an effective card. I mean, mostly because of Endure, right? Yeah, I'll put it, I'll put it in B. Looking at the rest of these cards, yeah, it makes, it makes a bit of sense. Stirred Spirits. I'm not mad with C or B. I'm glad to hear that, man. <laughs> Stirred Spirits, guys. Can we all agree that Stirred Spirits is like a really bad card? It's a two mana three two. It's a pretty good stat line. It's effect it's really good with ephemeral units, but ephemeral units are bad. You can go and look at look at how many cards are in the D tier. Maybe I'm evaluating them wrong. But you know what? That's okay. Unsort of Shadows. Good roleplay. Good one. Why what pawn? Uh, Ravenous Butcher. I'm going to put Ravenous Butcher into a B tier. It's somewhat functional. It's kind yes. of niche. Plunder me, dude. Yo, Clockwork 4. Hey, thanks for the follow, man. Is Butcher actually not that impressive? <laughs> it's S tier if you draw it on Curse Keeper. I don't, I don't mind B, guys. I think I saw a few Bs. I don't mind B. Oblivious Islander is actually probably C tier, right? Like, it does have some niche scenarios. Yeah, I like it. I like it in C tier somewhere. 
Holy shit, Miss Wraith. Am I supposed to put Miss Wraith in B? Because like, if you're playing a Miss Wraith deck, it's an effective choice. Miss Wraith itself feels like more of an optional choice though. Because the Wraith Core is like super powerful. You wouldn't necessarily run Miss Wraith as often. It's very niche. Obviously we're running it as of recently, but in general, like the Miss Wraith itself is kind of very average. But Wraith Core is fucking insane. Scribe of Sorrows. I think that's a meme card. On a quick reflection here, I feel like, yeah. Darkwater Scourge. I actually don't know if Darkwater Scourge can even be playable right now. Like when I think about it, uh, I'll keep it there for now. It just doesn't look right there, but maybe it's just right. Mark of the Isles. Yeah, that's that's going to be a D at the moment. Holy shit. This card used to be amazing. It's now an empty shell of what it once was. Soul Shepherd. Soul Shepherd is actually kind of functional. 2 mana 2 3 is never a bad stat line. Um in terms of making ephemeral decks work, yeah, you would run Soul Shepherd. It's not a complete trash card. It's not a complete trash card. Warden's Prey. Warden's Prey is actually a solid B, guys. Is it... Maybe it's a bit too niche, though. I think it's a really powerful one drop. It is a bit of a niche card. However, the card by itself is rather insane. I definitely like it a lot more than the rest of these cards. Withering Whale. Holy shit, the Shadow Wilds have some amazing common cards. Whew. Withering Whale? Holy shit, Withering Whale is an A tier card. Um, yeah. Whale is a really good card. I wonder if I can make it S tier. I don't think so. Because like it's yeah, no, it's on the same level as Vengeance, right? Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. I put them right next to each other. Whale is a great card. It's not super S tier. A plus, yeah, I like the A plus. Chronicler of Ruin. Yeah, probably a C, right? Top end of C. B for Chronicle. Actually, Couple B's, couple C's. So, four mana, three, three, kill, pl kill an ally and then revive it. It has, it has a bit of a ceiling. It does have quite a bit of a ceiling. I'm going, I look, I want, I want to promote Chronicle. I think I want to promote Chronicle. Like, look at the rest of the cards here. This is quite niche though. I feel like if I if I promote Chronicle of Ruin to B, I have to put Miss Wraith into B as well. Because I feel like Miss Wraith is a better card than Chronicle of Ruin. 
It's very niche though. It is very niche. That's the problem. And you can it can sometimes fucking it can fuck your hand up as well. You'd never like you don't oftentimes want to run like three copies of it either. C. Black Spear. It's kind of functional. Uh oh. Oh, we're fine. I thought I lost the whole thing. <laughs> um. No. Oh, we lost the whole D tier. That's right. Easy fix. All the cards are here. Holy shit. <laughs> no. It's okay. They're all in order. I just dragged them back in. What was the last card we were talking about? Black Spear. Guys, Black Spear, C, I agree. C is not a bad option for it. Don't worry, I can edit this out in the video. Yeah, Black Spear used to cost two mana. Hey, how insane is that? It's actually so insane. See, it's functional. It's a functional card. Sinister Poro. Does anybody think this is a good card? Because if not, I'm going to put it in D. It's got the Poro tag. Poro. <laughs> uh, Vile Feast Vile Feast dude A for Vile It gotta be an S But where in S Where in S Dude, dude, A, two mana, deal one fast speed, summon a body. Next to single combat. All right. The, the like, Vile Feast can stabilize your board incredibly well in the early game. Incredibly well. It's an insane card. Top tier. Amazing card. Absorb Soul. So this deck wants you, this card wants you to play a deck that you kill your own units to get healing. Or you could just run healing. This card's somewhat functional, but it's also kind of just memeing if you play it. Who knows though, in the future, this card might get promoted into the C tier. I don't think it's unreasonable for us to get like a shit ton of like a shit ton of uh cards that could make this work. There's probably better healing cards than that though. Did I skip Aristocrat? Aristocrat, holy shit. I think Aristocrat's an A. Solid option. Chomp blockers are insane. Yeah, it's an A. Top tier A card. Very good card. Miss Cole.
I'm going to put Miss Coal. I don't like it there. B? B? Can I put Miss Call in B, guys? It's actually a little insane when you think about it. The, the ceiling of this card is kind of insane. It's really greedy, though. Top of B. I like it. B? Is that okay? Cool. I like it. Thanks, guys. I think you're all pretty wise. Here's a funny card to evaluate. Curse Keeper. How do we evaluate this card? Because obviously, it's insane when you kill it. Maybe you can play Absorb Soul with it. I don't know how to evaluate this card. I'm really stuck. What's some other examples we've used? God, I can't, I can't put Curse Keeper into an A. You're on its own, it's a C. But we all know... We all know it's not a C, right? I just don't know whether it's a B or an A. And I don't think it's an S. Like, it's, it, it requires, it requires, like, some stuff. I'm going to put Curse Keeper in A. Definitely towards the lower end though. Definitely towards the lower end. It's like looking at Curse Keeper compared to the rest of these cards here. It's quite obvious that Curse Keeper looks better. If I played Curse Keeper on the field and I didn't find my Blighted Caretaker or my Glimpse Beyond or my Vile Feast or my butcher or my anything i'd be pretty unlucky that doesn't happen very often this thing's gonna die also plays around removal yeah all right this yeah it's pretty good tempo holy shit glimpse beyond oh oh dude holy shit glimpse beyond might be the best common card in the game not right now, but in general. It rivals, it rivals the top slot, man. I'm telling you right now, Glimpse is insane. Can you imagine like, just drawing two cards? Holy shit. Like your opponent has to remove your units at some point. You can Glimpse them and draw two cards. Like nobody plays Glimpse like you know unless they have to you know like it's it, 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 it's like even though it says kill an ally to draw two cards you're gonna find some situation to use it in and sometimes you'll use it just to kill your units to draw cards anyway it's just a refill it's, it doesn't <laughs> Zacharon redeemed dab don't worry man I got you Thanks for that. I don't think Glimpse Beyond is as flexible. 
Although it is card draw. PP07 redeemed who's that Pokemon twice. You can you can just redeem it once, dude. Now play that after this. Crawling sensation. <laughs> You're right, man. I must be thirsty. I've been doing this for fucking an hour. How long have I been doing this for? Holy shit. When I edit this VOD, I'm not even going to trim it. Normally I cut out certain bits, but I cannot be bothered. It's so long. Crawling is a C. Yeah, it's not a bad card, but it's very niche. I wasn't going to put it into D. I don't think I put it into B. Grasp of the Undying. Solid B. Solid B, right? I don't think Grasp is as good as Withering Whale. I just don't, like, if it comes down to Withering Whale or Grasp, it's always Withering Whale, right? Grasp? It's like, I could probably put this right to the top of B tier and feel quite comfortable. Arachnoid Horror. I put Arachnoid Horror right next to Miss Wraith, actually. That makes sense to me. We have one card left. Averosian Century. Which I believe is almost an auto-include in almost every free old deck, right? Except for War Mothers. Averosian Century is going to go somewhere in the A tier. It is probably going to go somewhere around here. Second best in A, right? Better than House Spider. Guys. It's done. What up, Defiance? Say you gone, man. That's the tier list. Can you believe it? 